This video is going to cover the topic of adding integers. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video is what is the rule, otherwise known as algorithm, for adding integers? And so far when we've talked about integers, we've used a chip model and a number line model, and I like both of those, but they become rather impractical when we want to add large numbers. For example, if I wanted to add, I don't know, negative 65 and 99, I don't think I would go through drawing a chip for that. That would take too much time. So in this video, we're going to use some smaller, friendlier numbers um, with our models to see if we can find a pattern that will help us create a rule. And we'll start by looking at examples when both integers are negative. Let's think, for example, if we had negative 5 plus negative 3. And with this, of course, right, we would say we have negative five chips. I'm going to make these red to make them negative. And then we would add three more negative chips. So we'd add our three more and we'd say, oh, we have a total of eight negative chips, right? Nothing new there. And if, for example, I had negative six plus negative one, I'd have six negative red chips and an extra one, and that would be a negative seven total, right? So if we're adding integers that are both negative, we're just combining the red chips all together for a total. Since we've done some work with this before, and since you're seeing these in front of you, I just want you to take a moment to write down what you notice, right? We're gonna look for a pattern that we can use to make our rule. So take a moment to record that in the box, and when I look at your notes, I wanna make sure I can see that. So here's what I noticed. One, since we were adding two negative numbers, the chips were the same colors which meant there were no two colors that were kind of canceling each other out. There were no zero pairs, which means I really just added the two absolute values of those numbers together to get my answer. But then of course the answer, it was a whole bunch of negatives being put together. The final answer was still negative, which means if I had, you know, negative three plus negative two, I would have these three red chips, right? two more red chips, there's nothing to cancel out. So really, I'm just adding the absolute value of negative three and the absolute value of negative two and saying, oh, well, two plus three is five. There's five chips all together, but they're still negative chips. So my answer would be a negative five. So let's try it. I'm gonna give you some numbers and I don't want you to have to draw the chips or the number line. I just want you to try to think about what the total would be. So take a minute, pause the video, and just jot these number sentences with their answers down on your paper. And remember, try to do it without the chips, without the number lines. How'd you do? Did you notice that the absolute value of negative 10 is 10? The absolute value of negative 9 is 19? So your answer is 19, but they're all negatives, so it's negative 19. This one should have been negative 18, and this one should have been negative 31. Now what's trickier is sometimes we have to add integers when one is positive and one is negative. So I'm actually going to have us draw the chip model again and look for some patterns with this because the pattern might be a little bit harder to see. And I'm gonna break these examples up into two sections. The first of which is when we're looking for a pattern when there are more positive chips than there are negative chips. In the first example, we have six plus negative four. So I've actually gone ahead and drawn this, but you wanna make sure you draw it too. And then I'm going to look for zero pairs, right? So that I've lined up, that can go away. That's another zero pair, another zero pair, and slightly askew, another zero pair. And that equals two. Right, so that's our first example. We're gonna do a couple so you can notice a pattern. The second example is five plus negative one, and sorry, I usually put parentheses around there so you can tell that that negative goes with the one. So we have five plus negative one, and if we cross off our zero pairs, we are left with a positive four. And let's do one more example. And our last example here will be a four plus a negative two. And of course, I'm gonna cross off zero pairs and I am left with just two. So we wanna look at these examples and think about some patterns that we notice. And we're gonna write our patterns over here on the side again. 
So one thing I notice is that if I look at six and four, right, my six and negative four, six minus four equals two, and five minus one equals four, and four minus two equals two. But then my answer was positive in each one of these examples, and I'm wondering why that is. Well, and it kind of makes sense that the answer would be positive, right? Because they were more positive chips. So that's what's left over on the board, right? So if the number with the larger absolute value is positive, that's what's gonna kind of win out and your answer will be positive. So if there is more, more positive chips than negative, then we subtract the numbers and then they would have an answer of a positive value because there'd be more positive chips in the end. And then, of course, we wanna see what happens if there are more negative chips than positive, right? So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna put these up kind of pretty quickly this time. And we're just gonna see what happens if there are more negative chips than positive. In the first example, three plus negative seven, I'm gonna cross out my zero pairs, as I like to do. And I'm left with four, but this time they're negative. On my other example, I'm gonna cross out my zero pair and I'm left with three chips. And again, this time they are negative. So the question is, can we predict what would happen if we saw a question like this, where we were adding one positive and one negative, but there were more negative chips than positive? The first thing I notice is that again, the numbers are being subtracted, right? So here we have seven and three, and the answer is four, right? So seven minus three is four. We have four minus one, and the answer is three, right? So once again, we're subtracting the two values. But this time, the answers happen to be negative. And that makes sense, right? There's more negative chips than there are positive chips. Taking what we just saw and putting it into words that we can look back on later, um, if there are two negative numbers, we add the absolute values of the two and the answer is negative. If there's one positive and one negative, we subtract the two absolute values. And here's where you have to pay attention. The answer is the sign of the number that sort of had more chips, the one with the larger absolute value. So I'm going to put two questions down. I want you to finish those so that I can see them on your notes. So go ahead and add negative 8 plus negative 12 and also 9 plus negative 3. And remember that the essential question of this video was how we add integers, that there was an algorithm that we could use. And so we went over that um, and we will talk about that more in class. Make sure you bring your notes and I'll see you then.